Yeah, she's a sweetheart. March 4, 2013, the notice requirements provided for the Open Public Meetings Act have been satisfied. Notice of this meeting was properly given by transmission to the Asbury Park Press, the Star Ledger, the Independent, and the Two Over Times, and by posting at the Middletown Township Municipal Building, and filing with the Township Clerk on January 11, 2013. Committeeman Fiore. Committeeman Cell. Deputy Mayor Murray. Here. Committeeman Sanambrino. Here. Mayor Sharpenberg. Here. Please rise to the Pledge of Allegiance. of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to ask for a moment of silence to honor the troops serving worldwide, defending our freedoms, constitutions, and way of life. Next agenda, we have introduction of Ordinance 2013-3083, an ordinance amending the 2012-3054 Code of Conduct, as well as the 2012 Anyone to sell? Yes. Um, Mayor Murray? Yes. Anyone to sell in Yes. Mayor Sharpenberger? Yes. Motion carries to introduce ordinance 2013-3083. The public hearing will be held March 18, 2013. Our next item on tonight's agenda, we have resolution 13-97. Resolution authorizing payment of bills for March 4, 2013. Motion. Sure. Minimum cell. Yes. Deputy Mayor Murray. Yes. Minimum cell. Yes. yes. Mayor Governor. Yes. Motion carries. Pass resolution 13-97. This time we have resolution 13-98. Resolution authorizing an emergency temporary budget appropriation. Move for adoption. Second. <coughs> Minimum cell. Yes. Deputy Mayor Murray. Yes. Committeeman Sanabrino. Yes. Mayor Sharpenberger. Yes. Motion carries to adopt resolution 13-98. This time we have resolution 13-99, a resolution authorizing the deputy mayor to solemnize marriages and civil unions in the absence of the mayor. Adoption. Second. Committeeman Missell. Yes. Deputy Mayor Murray. Yes. Committeeman Sanabrino. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mayor Schaffenberg. Yes. Motion carries to adopt resolution 13-99. This time we have resolution 13-100. Resolution supporting the Monmouth County Water Quality Management Plan. Move for adoption. Second. Committee Member Sell. Yes. Deputy Mayor Murray. Yes. Committee Member Senator Reno. Yes. Mayor Schaffenberg. Yes. Motion carries to adopt resolution 13-100. At this time, we have 13-101, a resolution authorizing the 2013 <coughs> Office on Aging Grant Agreement in the amount of $32,500. Move for adoption. Second. Okay. Question on this? Uh, sure. there, is no, there is no match to this, right? No match to this, right? Um, no. No, re no requirement. No. Um, Committee Member Sell? Yes. Deputy Mayor Murray? Yes. Committee Member Senator Brino? Yes. Mayor Sharpenberg? Yes. Motion carries to adopt resolution 13-101. <coughs> this time we have resolution 13-102, resolution authorizing the board of contract for sale of recyclable materials. Move for adoption? Second. Committee Member Sell? Yes. Deputy Mayor Murray? Yes. Committee Member Senator Brino? Yes. Mayor Sharpenberg? Yes. Motion carries to adopt resolution 13-102. This time we have raffle license numbers 25, 26, and 32 for approval. Second. 
Massau. Yes. Deputy Mayor Murray. Yes. Committee Minister Senator Brino. Yes. Mayor Sharpenberg. Yes. Motion carries to approve draft licenses 25, 26, and 32. For an agenda items for March 18, 2013, for certificates of appreciation and proclamation, proclamation declaring May 1st through June 1st as opportunity, and the presentation of life saving awards to Office of Emergency Management Volunteers. Vote we'll approval of minutes for January 6, 2013, reorganization meeting, February 4, 2013, executive and workshop meetings, and February 19, 2013, executive and regular meetings. For discussion tonight, we have a hazard mitigation grant. Um, um, just as an update, we, as you know, the hazard mitigation grant program um, deadline is uh, March 18th, and so we're working on our letter of intent, uh, our letter of interest, um, and. Uh, as part of that, we sent um, letters out to all of the property owners that we know who are substantially um, damaged uh, to determine level of interest in participating in a program if we were to receive funds that would help people to elevate their uh, structures. And um, uh, so far, it's been a pretty, we've got a pretty, very good response actually, and the vast majority are interested in participating. How have um, we reached out to them? You know, certified letters. Okay. Yeah. We had a little bit of trouble because of some people not being in their homes. Yeah. Uh, if you didn't put their name, you just put an address on there, some of them got returned. So we then followed up with um, uh, their name so that they would get forwarded properly. It's, um, also, it, it's also available yeah. on the website as well. Tony, can, can you advise how, the, how this uh, grant the scope uh, was modified uh, when Mr. Greenspan last presented it to the to the team? What do you mean by scope? Um, I know there were comments that the committee made with regard to the uh, localized flood reduction component of it and an increase in that component. Uh, did that happen from yes. the last time to this time? Yes, we've added some uh, flood reduction projects. Um, again, we're not at the point yet where we're specifying um, actual dollar amounts yet. To get that later on when we know how much money is going to likely to be allocated. Um, and then also there's a, a generator program we're working with the Board of Education to uh, possibly per utilize the funds to purchase a generator to make at least one of the middle school potential uh, shelter for the future so it will have backup power. But those are the primary um, areas that we're pers pursuing for the hazard mitigation grant program. And again, not to be confused with the community development block grant program, which is a whole different thing, different times time schedule and everything. This is hazard mitigation, March 18th deadline, and um, um, many, many months away before those funds are likely to be available. Okay. We have the harvesting of shadow vegetation. Um, as, as many of you know, the, the um, Shadow Lake has a problem with the um, overgrowth of water chestnuts in the higher end and in the past the township has used uh, a firm to um, treat the, the growth with an herbicide so I requested some information from that firm that was used in the past to, to give us a roughly some rough numbers for um, two, two uh, procedures one will be the, the herbicidal treatment of the, um, the lake Maybe two two a year, um, and then the other process would be the actual harvesting or hydro raking of the lake to remove the plant life uh, at the higher end. And if you look at the map that was included, it's very specific to where this work would be performed. And this is the shallower end of the lake, um, and this is where most most of the growth is. So this uh, gives us an idea of the the scope for for budgeting purposes. And although this will have to go out to bid. Uh, it gives us the rough idea of what this cost would be, both on a uh, one-time uh, basis for the hydro raking. It's a procedure that would have to be uh, performed every couple of years. And uh, the so herbicide treatment would be usually twice a year. So that's not using the marsh master then? It's not, no. This is actually, this is a, they actually use a barge and a large, much larger machine. Uh, the marsh master is something we would be able to use as follow-up treatment in-house. Follow-up maintenance. For, for normal maintenance. 
So what's this A and B section? Is that is that? A and B sec the A and B sections are up near the dock, up near Stevenson Park. It's where the, it's very shallow and where the, most of the growth is. Um, that's where the hydro waking will take place under this under the proposal sent into this to us. Um, now I know it does. It, it does go as far as parts of C. Does that mean you're not going to go that far, or is that just the quote well, we're getting on? Well, that's the quote we're getting. If we were going to expand that area, we'd obviously bump that number up. Um, the the C area is is where, of course, the the herbicide will be used um, to to treat the uh, growth. And that will take, like I said, that will take place twice a year in the spring and the late summer. What's the success that you've had with that with the herbicide? Again, I wasn't really part of this when it was done in the past, and I, I heard it was fairly successful. I think combined with the actual hydro raking, um, the success rate is very high. Just the issue with, with this, of course, is we will, if we're going to proceed, we'll have to go out to bid. This was just to get a ballpark idea of what the cost would be. We have to bid this out, um, and we have to provide for this in the in the budget. Um, and we're, one of the things we're trying to determine whether or not it's an eligible capital item or not. It's kind of a, a unique animal. It's not a piece of equipment, which is obviously capital right. it's maintenance of a lake. So we're trying to get a ruling on whether or not we use budget. Yeah, we would do it definitely. How much this year? Uh, $66,000 for all the work. That's the estimate that we got to go to. Just an estimate. Both processes, right? What was the breakdown between the two? The uh, $34,000 for two herbicide treatments. And that is probably going to have to be put in the budget for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other one you're looking into. Right. The rate, the hydro rate. And that's the smaller of the two, right? Plus. Right, that would be somewhere around thirty thousand dollars. Ted, um, one of one of the um, items in here indicates that there's the follow-up inspections and monitoring. Is that ongoing, or is there only, is that once? Well, that would be it. Would be probably more for the first year because it hasn't been done in a few years. Mm -hmm. So this would be probably probably for this year. I think it would be a lower number in the okay. following years. But it would have to be obviously monitored and inspected every year okay. as we as they determine what the treatment will be. Yeah, is that safe as far as swimmers and because and, um, like they know people swim in the lake and they still are they gonna stock it at, at the same time? Stock it every year with trout? Yeah, they they did, they stocked it last year and um, and we've used this before. It and, is, uh, yeah. It's it's safe for it, it's safe levels. It's pellets obviously that drop at the bottom of the uh, the roots of the plant. the ADFE flood ordinance? This will be back, uh, as you recall, we introduced an ordinance to um, uh, modify our floodplain management ordinance uh, to deal with the um, advisory base flood elevation maps. After we introduced it, the state then actually enacted the, the, the or adopted the base flood elevations um, and some additional, uh, uh, we learned some additional information as, as the state did that. So we're going to have to amend it, the ordinance a little bit um, and uh, we'll reintroduce it at the March 18th meeting and hopefully have a, have a public hearing in the first meeting in April and then the ordinance will be in place. It just changes a few uh, things about the way our ordinance currently works um, and, and again enacts the advisory base flood elevations and it's, it's just important, it helps homeowners with their insurance claims to have an ordinance that um, puts those maps into place, the elevations into place. Right. All right. We have the school shared service agreement. You have uh, <coughs> in your packets a draft form of a shared service agreement uh, for the uh, use and maintenance of fields in conjunction with the school district, something that's been a topic of discussion. <coughs> As you know, for some time, uh, I know there's been a number of comments and suggestions to it, so I uh, don't think we'll have it on for uh, action next meeting, but uh, I'll wait comments and confer with the uh, board attorney for the uh, school board with whatever uh, feedback we have from the committee. Any other questions? And the Unity Road Properties Auction? The, um, as you recall, the uh, township 
had uh, you know, subdivided four lots of township property on uh, Unity Road, uh, one of which has been uh, dedicated for the purpose of uh, affordable housing for the blind individuals uh, in that one supported housing unit. Um, the other three lots uh, would be put um, would be uh, put up for auction by the township in a regular property auction we typically do about once a year. Um, so this would follow the same form as we've used the last few years. Um, so I'd anticipate an ordinance authorizing the sale of those three remaining lots in Unity Road, along with a resolution authorizing the uh, auctioneering company to conduct that auction um, uh, for those lots pursuant to the local lands and uh, buildings law. And um, so I'd anticipate that on the agenda for next meeting so these properties can be uh, you know, sold at some time in the spring, as you recall, after the uh, the uh, authorization takes place. And as we've done in prior years, we've had no reserve in these properties, but left it to the um, determination of the committee whether to accept or reject uh, the highest bids from the auction based on uh, how they come in. And uh, we anticipate doing the same uh, this time, which would then require a uh, resolution adopted by the Township Committee after the conclusion of the auction to uh, accept the bid and get into a uh, contract on the properties. Okay. Anybody have any other questions? Okay. 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 <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to break with tradition, and uh, just a few things. I, I attended the first aid dinner uh, at the Lakeside Manor uh, about two weeks ago, and I had the honor of swearing in several new officers, and let me tell you, my math skills were tested that night, because as they read the uh, awards, uh, they start off with so-and-so answered 350 calls, and they work their way up to 700 calls in a year. Now, average two calls a day, every day of the year. It's, it's really staggering how much, uh, how much they do for the town and how they're able to do it and still have full-time jobs. It's amazing. Uh, this past Saturday was the Elks Charity Bowl, and always a great event, always helping some uh, in-need child, and this is, uh, this is no different. Uh, these kids have some pretty tough uh, problems, and uh, you really have to give them a lot of credit. They're always smiling and dancing, and everybody else is walking around with long faces. So it's uh, really a great event. The Elks do such a great job and uh, every year, and they're going to have a, uh, a breakfast with awards uh, this coming Sunday. So they're a busy group of, uh, of residents. And uh, the Arts Center had their open house this past Sunday. Over 3,000 people, just an unbelievable turnout. It was really great. Uh, kids and, and parents all excited about the upcoming season. Uh, very successful. And finally, the, the shared service agreement with the Board of Ed. A great thing for the town. Something we've been working on for a while. And uh, something we're really happy and think is going to really serve uh, the leagues and, and the kids of the town in, in a big way. And uh, we're very excited about it. A lot of work went into it. I know since I've been on the committee, we've been talking about doing this, and uh, it's finally come to fruition. So, uh, good job all around, and congratulations to the Board of Ed and the administration here. And that's all I have to say. Okay, before we start with the public comments, I just want to remind everybody, please give your name and address, and please keep your comments to five minutes. And I'm going to enforce that. We can't have folks going over, because then everybody will have to go over, and it's not fair to the others uh, who want to speak. So with that, what's your pleasure? Yes, ma'am. Donna Coons, 10 Leonard Avenue, Leonardo. If you don't mind, I came out tonight uh, because of the discussions tonight, the hazard mitigation grants and the ABFE flood ordinance. Um, you had stated that, that a letter of intent went out as far as the hazard mitigation grant program to those that are substantially 50% damaged. Um, now, Tony, you said that it will or may include localized flooding and flood reduction projects. Were letters sent out to homeowners to that effect as well? No. Uh, letters of intent were not sent out to homeowners. Letters of intent, a letter of intent is what is required by the town to submit to 
uh, the county will then submit those to the state. Um, what we sent out was letters of interest to um, people who had substantially damaged properties uh, asking if they're interested in participating in the, the program that would help subsidize the cost of elevating their structures. That's the only um, uh, question that we asked uh, residents um, directly. The other projects are more public projects, uh, like uh, localized drainage projects would be within existing drainage rights of way or in, within streets or, or streams. Okay, so you'd be seeking hazard mitigation assistance for those as well? Yes. Okay, and um, I noticed on that letter of interest that went out, um, in regards to the hazard mitigation grant, there were, I don't have one with me, so I'm sorry, there were four things listed there. One, if you had over $50,000 damage, if you were over 50% substantial damaged. Um, the fourth one, um, I'm sorry, I think this had to do with the Home Depot grant for the gift cards. The fourth one said something about, um, I don't remember the, the, the yeah, I, You might be mixing up letters, uh, that there's, there's uh, a, a form that's out asking uh, for eligible applicants to apply for the Disaster Relief Fund money, uh, w which is $1,000, uh, up to $1,000 um, gift card for Home Depot. That was right. a whole different letter. It had okay. nothing to do with hazard it, it may It may have been that one. Um, it wasn't actually a letter. It's actually um, available on the website. It's, nice. yeah, it's an application on the website. It said something in there about mandatory compliance with um, floodplain regulations, though. Right. Like, what, what exactly does that mean? Well, in other words, it's the use of the... Now you're back to hazard mitigation. You're back to the hazard mitigation letter. So, so forget the Home Depot thing. That's a completely different. Right. Uh, the letter that went out regarding the hazard mitigation program is basically saying that you would you uh, participate in a program that would be used to bring your house home into compliance with flood, uh, the floodplain regulations. So in other words, the, the program would be for the purpose of someone utilizing those funds to help them either to help them to elevate their existing house to bring it into compliance. Okay. There's a lot of misinformation going out there. Um, I did hear, and I don't recall where I heard it from, that once you agree to accept federal funds to elevate your house as part of the hazard mitigation, that you're going to have to put a uh, restriction on your deed that federal funds have been used to mitigate the property and that um, you or any future purchaser of that home is going to be required to maintain flood insurance. Is that correct? Uh, we don't know that yet because we haven't been given the guidelines by the state. Uh, we were told they're still working on the criteria that's going to be, or the strings, if you will, that will be attached to the use of, the, of those funds. So that's, that's in the rumor mill right now, but we don't know that. We haven't been given that information. Okay, this first round of hazard mitigation grants um, with the deadline date of March 18. A lot of people don't have their numbers all the way in yet. Is there going to be a second round? It, it, people don't need to have their numbers in. This is just a letter of interest from the township saying, yes, we have enough residents who are interested in participating. But down the road, we'll get more into specific application criteria and how much damage each individual would have to have had. Keep in mind, hazard mitigation money is, we're told, is not going to be available for 12 to 18 months. Okay. So that's a long-term um, program. Community development block grant program is a little bit different. We, we've been told that's coming sooner, but again, we don't have guidelines or criteria yet. The state's <coughs> supposedly working on those too. Okay, so then the states <coughs> will hand out the guideline criteria to the township, and then it's up to the township to... <clears throat> well, it'll also tell us how much we're eligible for, too. Okay. Donna, we can stay after and go over this. All righty, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Andrew Butts, 327 Main Street, Port Monmouth. I would like a update on what is happening with Bayshore Village to date. Because I rode through there today, and just to give a synopsis, synopsis the hurricane hit around October 29th <clears throat> last year. Exactly. 
the residences were informed <clears throat> over three meetings by Dave, the <clears throat> planning manager over there, that you have a week to get out, you have to get your belongings out, the faster you're out of the buildings, the faster the work will begin, okay? Not to mention where these people were going to go, they're all senior citizens, they have medical issues to deal with, I mean, it's anybody's grandmother over there, okay? Plus, they don't have the money to put their stuff in storage for six, seven months. Now, uh, I was told by office people over there that, number one, uh, no work could be completed because the township has stopped issuing work permits until the buildings are raised because of the flood zones. That story has changed now by them telling me that the work hasn't been completed because the insurance company hasn't come forth with the money. Now here we are in March, March 4th. The rubble is still sitting there. And I happen to know personal residences who got the, what they could out of the building. They did not have enough time to go back into that building. As a result, they have lost valuable treasures. God knows where they are. And I would like an answer to find out what's going on before I go to Channel 12 News with this. Well, I can tell you that the, the issue, I, I, I met with Dave um, Shiro, I'm trying to think it was Thursday, I think it was Thursday of last week and spoke to him about it, and the issue is that they are in actually uh, about to be in litigation, I believe, with their insurance company. Um, that's, uh, that's all I, it does not look, they, uh, from an insurance standpoint, I don't think that's going to be a solution for them. Um, they are uh, meeting with New Jersey Housing Mortgage Finance Agency, and they had a HUD representative coming, I believe it was actually today, right. um, to discuss other funding options to um, get the units uh, repaired. Um, but you really have to ask him and that board specifically where they stand on that. But we don't day to day. We don't have any, um, you know, say over that board. They offer their own their own place. But that's the status. They do have an insurance issue. They have an insurance issue. Yep. <coughs> Andy, is that it? That's it for now. <coughs> Andy, just so you know, too, we, we are reaching out to other organizations outside of uh, the government organizations right, right. to see if we can get them some help. So there are a few things, like, I don't want to mention the names of these organizations, <coughs> right. but we're trying everything we can, you know, to do an end run around the, the roadblock that, you know, the insurance company is, <coughs> is putting up, okay? Uh, anyone else care to speak? Seeing no... Oh. Uh, a couple questions. I'm sorry, Linda Bound, 19 May Court. Um, do you happen to know in the next meeting of the Bayshore Village, um, uh, I'm not sure what the name of the group is, board that handles that, do you know when their next meeting is? Is that curiosity? I don't, I don't know what the next date is. We get, um, we get to let you know what their schedule is. Okay. Um, I'll check online. If I don't see there, I'll, I'll call. <coughs> um, a few other questions. One is regarding the... Um, the auction you talked about for the Unity Court properties. Um, could you tell me a little bit about the auction? Is that, um, is it, you know, do people submit their bids um, anonymously, quietly? I mean, does, do other people know no, what the bids are? It's a, it's, a, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a public open auction. The, in order to qualify <coughs> be a bidder, you have to leave it, a, you know, give a deposit in advance to get a number, I believe, or something to that effect. Um, and uh, it's an you know, open public auction. It's and actually pretty interesting. It's actually fascinating yeah, to watch. It's actually it's very good watch, watch it. But it's, uh, it's not to, it won't just be these three lots. Yeah, yeah it will be a whole bunch of properties. They'll probably have dozens of properties all over the place. They bundle properties the together. Yeah. Okay, so people are actually calling out their, their bids pretty so much, people yeah. can hear the numbers. Just like you yeah. see on TV or somewhere else. So. Okay. That um, music. Um, <laughs> they can be anonymous. That music, yeah. Okay. Somebody sitting in the back playing music. Yeah. But the whole reason why the, town, the okay. township does that, we it found that right. um, it's much more likely, we had much more success <coughs> in getting higher values because the company that operates the auction does it. They do a major marketing campaign to builders, developers, what have you. They have a network of, you know, it's something that we could never do through a couple of newspaper ads that we have to, which are the minimum requirement under the law. Okay. But they, they get a lot of bigger crowd out and bundling it with other properties. So it gets the taxpayers to. more money. Okay, I just have to move on. I don't have a lot of time. I wanted to also ask you about the, the work that's being done over on uh, Davis Lane with regard to the drainage easement. 
Um, I understand that work began about a month ago, and um, I was told that it stopped after about two weeks. Do you know uh, why? What are they waiting for uh, equipment? I can answer that. Uh, basically, they, they stopped because of the weather. Uh, the last last week was very wet, and they didn't want to start to uh, restore the slope to have it washed away. So, waiting for a drier block of time. They're anticipating this week they would uh, continue with that work. Okay. And uh, the other issue with regard to that, um, the property over there, I was told that there was a depression that was forming, a significant depression forming in the lawn that is adjacent to the easement. All right, so it's actually on the private property adjacent to the easement. And I was wondering two things about that. Uh, the first one is the scope of, of the work that's being done on the drainage project. Does it include any reme remediation for problems that are occurring around the easement, like like this depression? I, I guess I'm not really sure I understand the question, but if the, the project is based on unit pricing, so for example, if some additional um, materials required to restore the area, then the contract allows for that, um, although I don't really understand the exact question. Um, well, basically, I guess from the homeowner standpoint, they're wondering if it's going to be taken care of. Their, uh, the assumption is that because of the damage to, to the pipes there in the drain, that the water is causing this problem in the property adjacent to the easement. Um, so they're wondering if that is going to be fixed. It is, if it's part of this current uh, repair, um, if it might be something that's addressed going forward. I would suggest, the, the, has I would suggest the individual homeowner okay. take it up with the engineer. All right, I'm going to leave it at that. If an individual homeowner has a problem, they can contact the engineer and deal with that. We're not going to do it through you, Ms. Bell. Uh, I was actually at, uh, a lot of people know that I attend these meetings. And so often people ask me to find out about issues for them, and I do that as well, courtesy. Well, we will deal with the individual homeowner if they have an issue. Please let them know to reach out to the township engineer whose contact information I know you have. So. Okay. Um, all right, we'll pass that along. Um, all right, thank you. Uh, anybody else here to speak? See no further than members of the public come forward and close the public portion and move for general. Can you make the sound? Yes. Deputy Mayor Murray. Yes. Can you make the sound of Yes. Mayor Sharp. Yes. Motion Mayor 